Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and we do appreciate all of you being here and uh, your input. Um, Mr. French, um, as Deputy Director of the Forest Service, uh, you happen to be the person here and available. Um, we have national forests in the southern part of my district, and as you certainly know, when that program, when the national forests were created, uh, it was a great agreement between local, state, and federal officials because the federal government was going to be able to manage uh, the forest so well and manage the forest well, particularly in East Texas, since we have no sequoias, we have no redwoods, we have pine trees that grow back in 20 to 25 years, is one of America's great renewable resources, which is now going underused tremendously. Uh, but even in the 1980s, um, probably my most rural county, um, they were showing me that they were getting 1.6, $1.7 million as their 25% of the production revenue off of the national forests. Um, and that was helpful. They divided half between the county roads and maintenance, and then the other half going to the schools. Now the counties that have national forests, um, particularly the more rural, they are in financial distress. The one that was getting 1.6, 1.7 30 years ago, uh, recently got around 64,000. Uh, we have something, the Forest Service has something called the Stewardship Program, which my friend Bruce Westerman sees is working well in Arkansas. However, it is not working well in East Texas. And in fact, uh, I guess if some, a stewardship program spends money uh, on a project that greatly helps the surrounding area, that's great. But when it appears to be used just to hide revenue and enable the Forest Service not to give 25% to the local government and not to use it in a way that the local government can even figure out how they're using it, it's not helpful and especially when the government, the local government and the schools are in such trouble. Um, I think we ought to go to a situation where local government has a chance to opt in or out of the stewardship program. So if you've got a situation like Bruce Westerman has, fine, but we would opt out listening to my counties. But on August 19th, we had uh, Sheriff Robert Cartwright in San Augustine County had deputies that were pursuing, they knew they had probable cause. This guy was a drug dealer and they were after him. They thought there were probably more and he got into the national forest. They called the sheriff. He's trying to be a good neighbor. It was hot pursuit. They called the forest service. Four hours later, kind of hard to be hot pursuit, uh, get a call from a special agent in charge, not of the FBI. I didn't know we had a special agent in charge in the Forest Service. He tells the sheriff, we're going to try to get you an answer before long. It was days later. They let him know, we're still working on it. And then eventually, over a week later, a guy comes in, apparently very competent, and he goes into the land, still didn't let the deputy or the sheriff, and they find this massive marijuana project. And he tells the sheriff, it's the most sophisticated crop he has ever seen being developed and grown. And the problem is, when you wait over a week and still don't let the sheriff or his deputies pursue criminals, you may find what they had to abandon, but the good news for the drug cartels is the Forest Service is so incompetent and so inept we can just move over to another national forest because they'll take a week before they'll let anybody come after us. So they got the crop, they got all this sophisticated equipment, 
what they don't have is any of the criminals because they no doubt have moved to another national forest so they can keep making money for the drug cartels. That's the story, and I regret the Forest Service can't be more competent in that area.